Anytime I talk to somebody about money who is struggling with money, a very common thing that I hear is that, man, if I just made some more money, my money problems would be solved. If I could just make 10% more money, 20% more money, an extra 50 grand a year, all my money problems would be solved. But what happens to so many people in that situation is you work harder to get a raise, you get a promotion, you get a bonus. All of a sudden, you start making more money, but then your expenses suddenly go up with your new income. This is why so many times you see people with high incomes that are still living broke, they're still living paycheck to paycheck, because if you do not have the right financial education on how to use your money, it does not matter how much money you win. You could go out and win the lottery and still end up broke. That's why the majority of lottery winners end up broke or bankrupt in just five years. So the real solution isn't just how much money you're making in the beginning, it's what you're doing with the money that you make. Now, once we know this, once we understand number one and two, that's when making more money will have the biggest impact and I'll talk about the ways that you can earn more money, but the first thing that you gotta do is you gotta understand how to systemize your money. In order to do that, you have to understand the difference between an asset and a liability. An asset is something that puts money in your pocket, a liability is something that takes money away from your pocket. Your clothes, your cars, your shoes, your vacations, your restaurants, all these things are liabilities. Assets are things that you buy for the sole purpose of making money. These would be things like your stock market investments, your real estate investments, not the home that you live in, but actual real estate investments. This could potentially be cryptocurrency and anything that you're buying your business for the sole purpose. You're spending money on this for one reason and one reason only to make money. The reason why I don't say that your home itself is an asset because you're buying your home, not for the purpose of making money, but for the purpose of having a place to live for a purpose that you can make memories in. Sure, can it make money? Yeah but you're not buying it with the reason and the goal of making money, which is why for so many people, their home is a money pit until you sell it and then you just have to hope that you can sell your home for a profit. So what happens to so many people is you make money and now you wanna go off and start spending money because you have to, you gotta pay your rent, you gotta pay your mortgage, you gotta pay your gas for your car, you gotta pay your phone bill, you gotta pay for utilities. All these things are liabilities and you spend your money, you spend your money, you spend your money and then you pay for your groceries and then you're left with little to nothing left and if there is something left, that's when you can start investing. What the majority of people do is they invest very little. They spend their money and then they invest whatever's left because they're worried about spending their money first. And what's happening here is all this money you're spending on liabilities is an asset for somebody. It's an asset for the person selling you the stuff. Because when you go to Lululemon, Gucci, Amazon, Kroger, Target, all the money that you spend at these companies is an asset for them because the money that you're spending on your liabilities is going into somebody else's assets. It's going into Target, it's going into Amazon, it's going into Lululemon, it's going into Apple, it's going into their pockets and their profits. Now the key here is you can be one of the people who is benefiting from their profits, but you have to understand the difference between a liability and an asset. And what the wealthy people are doing is they're spending less money here and more money here. They're first investing money in themselves. They're first using their cash to buy assets, and then they live off of whatever's left, while the majority of people are spending their money on liabilities, and then they buy assets with whatever's left. So it's a shift in mindset, and there's ways that you can do that without completely changing your lifestyle, but you need to have a system for your money. The simplest thing that you can do is follow something like my 75, 15, 10 plan. Now you can create one that's more better suited for you, but this is just a simple thing that you can follow where now every dollar that you earn is gonna flow through this almost three-headed funnel where now 75 cents out of every dollar that you earn is the maximum that you can spend 15 cents out of every dollar that you earn is the minimum that you will be investing and 10 cents out of every dollar that you earn is the minimum that you will be saving. Now what you're doing is you're automatically living below your means, but you're also automatically investing your money to make you wealthy. This is where the wealth is built. You're automatically saving some of your money. This is not where your wealth is gonna be built. This is a cushion. I'm gonna put this right here, cushion. This is to protect you against an emergency in case you lose a job. This is to protect you in case something goes wrong, your kid breaks their arm, you break your car, something happens so you have some extra cash to fall back on so you don't have to go into credit card debt. And this is the money that you live off of. This is the money that you're spending for your home, your groceries, your lifestyle. So this is now, you have a system where no matter how much money you make, whether you're making 40 grand a year, $400,000 a year, or $4 million a year, you can follow the exact same system that we're now, you're investing, you're saving, 
and you're spending your money that way. Now you're living below your means while you're also building wealth. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to saving, anytime you're in a high inflationary environment, saving becomes less and less attractive because your savings are being eaten away by inflation. This is why, again, your savings are not here to make you wealthy. It's there to protect you. But you need to know how much money to save because you just don't want to save your money forever. You should be saving somewhere between three months and a year's worth of expenses, depending on your risk tolerance. If you're okay with more risk, you don't have a lot of financial responsibilities, you don't have people relying on you, then a couple or a few months worth of savings is more than enough right now. Because right now you can be more aggressive with your investments. If you have people relying on you or you don't like the idea of taking on a lot of risk, then maybe you should have more savings because that's there to protect you. And now if something bad were to happen, you have a bigger savings cushion and you can just fall back on that and you won't really have to stress as much because you have cash to rely on. So you come up with the number, how much savings you wanna have, and then once you hit that savings goal, you stop saving money. From now on, you should be only saving money for three reasons. You're saving your money for an emergency, you're saving your money for a big purchase, or you're saving your money for an investment. If you're not saving your money for one of these three reasons, you should not be saving your money. Now for the emergency side, saving your money for an emergency or something wrong, you only need that three to 12 months worth of expenses. After you do that, you stop saving your money here, and you start investing this money. Now the question is, where do you invest your money? And that will bring me to number two, which we'll get to in just a second. But then with the spending, now you're gonna be required to live below your means. And this can be hard for a lot of people because sometimes we get accustomed to the lifestyle that we have. And you might think, how in the world am I only supposed to live off of 75% of the income that I have right now? I'm already living paycheck to paycheck. I'm already spending every dollar that I earn. Well, think about it this way. If the government were to tell you tomorrow that uh, your taxes are going up, they're going to charge you another 25% tax. What are you going to do? You might kick, scream, cry, but then you're going to figure it out. You're going to find a way to pay it. It's the same thing here. Now you're going to be paying yourself first. You're doing this to make yourself wealthy, not just the government or some other entity. You're doing this for yourself. You will figure it out. It will be difficult. It will be hard. But if you're willing to put in the work, you will find a way to do it. You will find a way to live smaller. Maybe you have to sell some stuff. Maybe you have to downsize. Maybe you don't buy as much stuff but you will be able to do this and now you're working to build your wealth. If you enjoy the shorter clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love and why I add it. If you're interested in learning more about how to invest your money in real estate, our team put together an amazing guide on real estate investing. This guide goes over what real estate investing is, how to start using real estate to generate cash flow, and how to build wealth with real estate. This guide is completely free when you sign up for our daily newsletter. So if you want to read our guide on how to start investing your money in real estate, you can download that guide just by clicking that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.